Ezra Revi E for Ezra 10. And it so came to pass that when my son was entered into his wedding chamber, he fell down and died. Then we all overthrew the lights, and all my neighbors rose up to comfort me. So I took my rest unto the second day at night. And it came to pass, when they had all left off to comfort me, to the end I might be quiet. Then rose I up by night and fled, and came hither into this field, as you see. And I do now purpose not to return into the city, but here to stay, and neither to eat nor drink, but continually to mourn and to fast until I die. Then left I the meditations wherein I was, and spoke to her in anger, saying, You foolish woman, above all other, See you not our mourning, and what happened unto us? How that Zion, our mother, is full of all heaviness, and much humbled, mourning very sore? And now, seeing we all mourn and are sad, for we are all in heaviness, are you grieved for one son? For ask the earth, and she shall tell you, that it is she which ought to mourn for the fall of so many, that grow upon her. For out of her came all at the first, and out of her shall all others come. And behold, they walk almost all into destruction, and the multitude of them is utterly rooted out. Who then should make more mourning than she that has lost so great a multitude? and not you which are sorry but for one. But if you say unto me, My lamentation is not like the earth's, because I have lost the fruit of my womb, which I brought forth with pains and bore with sorrows, but the earth not so, for the multitude present in it according to the course of the earth is gone as it came. Then say I unto you, like as you have brought forth with labor, even so the earth also has given her fruit, namely man, ever since the beginning unto him that made her. Now therefore, keep your sorrow to yourself, and bear with a good courage that which has befallen you. For if you shall acknowledge the determination of Elohim to be just, you shall both receive your son in time, and shall be commended among women. Go your way then into the city to your man. And she said unto me, That will I not do. I will not go into the city, but here will I die. So I proceeded to speak further unto her, and said, Do not so, but be counseled by me. For how many are the adversaries, rather adversities of Sion? Be comforted in regard of the sorrow of Yerushalayim. For you see that our sanctuary is laid waste, and our altar broken down, our temple destroyed, our psaltery is laid on the ground, our song is put to silence, our rejoicing is at the end, the light of our menorah is put out. The ark of our covenant is spoiled. Our holy things are defiled, and the name that is called upon is almost profaned. Our children are put to shame. Our priests are burnt. Our levim are gone into captivity. Our virgins are defiled, and our women ravished. Our righteous men carried away our little ones destroyed. Our young men are brought into bondage, rather in bondage, and our strong men are become weak. And which is the greatest of all, the seal of Sion has now lost her honor. 
for she is delivered into the hands of them that hate us. And therefore, shake off your great heaviness, and put away the multitude of sorrows, that Eil may be merciful unto you again, and Eil Elyan shall give you rest and ease from your labor. And it came to pass, while I was talking with her, behold, her face upon a sudden shined exceedingly, and her countenance glistened, so that I was afraid of her, and mused what it might be. And behold, suddenly she made a great cry, very fearful, so that the earth shook at the noise of the woman. And I looked, and behold, the woman appeared unto me no more, but there was a city built, and a large place showed itself from the foundations. Then was I afraid, and cried with a loud voice, and said, Where is Uriel the angel, who came unto me at the first? For he has caused me to fall into many trances, and my end is turned into corruption, and my prayer to rebuke. And as I was speaking these words, behold, he came unto me and looked upon me, and lo, I lay as one that had been dead, and my understanding was taken from me. And he took me by the right hand and comforted me and set me upon my feet and said unto me, What ails you, and why are you so disquieted? And why is your understanding troubled, and the thoughts of your heart? And I said, Because you have forsaken me, and yet I did according to your words. And I went into the field, and lo, I have seen, and yet see, that I am not able to express. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise you. Then said I, Speak on, my Lord, in me. Only forsake me not, lest I die frustrate of my hope. For I have seen that I knew not, and hear that I do not know. Or is my sense deceived, or my soul in a dream? Now, therefore, I beseech you that you will show your servant of this vision. He answered me then and said, Hear me, and I shall inform you and tell you wherefore you are afraid. For El Elyon will reveal many secret things unto you. He has seen that your way is right, for that you sorrow continually for your people and make great lamentation for Sion. This, therefore, is the meaning of the vision which you lately saw. You saw a woman mourning, and you began to comfort her. But now see you the likeness of the woman no more. But there appeared unto, a, rather, unto you a city built, and whereas she told you of the death of her son, this is the solution. This woman whom you saw is Sion, and whereas she said unto you, even she whom you see as a city built. Whereas I say she said unto you that she has been thirty years barren, those are the thirty years wherein there was no offering made in her. But after thirty years Shalomah built the city and offered offerings, and then bore the barren a son. And whereas she told you that she nourished him with labor, that was the dwelling in Yerushalayim. But whereas she said unto you that my son coming into his, re into his marriage chamber happened to have a fall and died, this was the destruction that came to Yerushalayim. And behold, you saw her likeness, and because she mourned for her son, you began to comfort her. And of these things which have chanced, these are to be opened unto you. For now El Elyon sees that you are grieved unfeignedly, and suffer from your whole heart for her. So has he showed you the brightness of her glory and the comeliness of her beauty. 
And therefore I bade you remain in the field where no house was built. For I knew that El Elyan would show this unto you. Therefore I commanded you to go into the field where no foundation of any building was. For in the place wherein El Elyan begins to show his city, there can no man's building be able to stand. And therefore fear not, let not your heart be frightened, but go your way in, and see the beauty and greatness of the building, as much as your eyes be able to see. And then shall you hear as much as your ears may comprehend, for you are blessed above many others, and are called with El Elyan, and so are but few. But tomorrow at night you shall remain here, and so shall El Elyan show you visions of the high things, which El Elyan will do unto them that dwell upon the earth in the last days. So I slept that night and another, like as he commanded me.